Welcome to this 23-part series on the book of Revelation and understanding Revelation. This is a series of Bible studies, and for these Bible studies, you will need a Bible, paper and pen for taking notes. So let's get started. Part 4, Revelation's Cosmic Conflict Angels Angels have become phenomenally prominent the last few years. Angels have made it to primetime TV. They used to star in a CBS hit show called Touched by an Angel. They appear in feature films and are the subject of best-selling books. All through the book of Revelation, angels are prominent, appearing in almost every chapter. But right now, I want to focus on an angelic conflict outlined in Revelation that overshadows everything we human beings can imagine. An epic battle that's been going on for centuries. This battle is supremely important because it's really a battle about who God is. It's a battle about human destiny, and we're all involved, whether we realize it or not. War in Heaven It seems impossible to believe, but in Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9, tells us, War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon who was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. War in heaven? It seems like a contradiction in terms. This brings up other perplexing questions like, why was there war in heaven? What was the dragon doing in heaven in the first place? What was Satan doing there? Where did he come from? A Prehistory of Satan Fortunately, there are some good clues. Scripture gives us hints of how that conflict developed. In fact, we can learn what Satan was like before the world was created and the prophecy we see that God is also talking about someone else. The exalted king represents a different angelic creature. Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. See Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 12 to 15. Here is described the anointed cherub who covers. This was an angel anointed for a special task. In the Jewish temple, the covering cherubs stood over the mercy seat, the throne of God. This angel had a special place near God's throne. He was the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. But something happened to this angel. Iniquity was found in him. He allowed sin to enter his life. How? Ezekiel 28 verse 17 explains, Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. This angel got wrapped up in his own splendor and beauty. There's nothing wrong with appreciating your own talents and abilities and feeling good about yourself. So how did this angel move from healthy self-esteem to iniquity? How was his wisdom corrupted? If you look at Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 14 tells us, and also tells us the angel's name, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. 
Lucifer became an angel with an attitude. Being near God's throne wasn't enough. He wanted a higher position. He wanted the kingdom and the power and the glory of God himself. Love is the answer. John tells us that God is love. See 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. Love was all around Lucifer, but Lucifer turned away from that and finally saw God as a rival. His twisted mind pictured God as the enemy. This rebellious angel wandered. Why should God have all the power and authority? Lucifer thought he could do just as good a job at running things. Now heaven was a place where jealousy and slander and malice had never existed. Angels had never heard a lie, which was invented by Lucifer. See John chapter 8, verse 44. And couldn't cope with falsehood. It never occurred to them to question God's wisdom and love. And suddenly this brilliant Lucifer, this cherub, so near the throne of God, starts making remarks. He wonders why God has to have all the glory, why every created being has to obey him. Maybe there's an alternative, a better way to run the universe. Lucifer, who seemed so reasonable, so wise, questioned God's authority and persuaded many other angels to join his rebellion. Enough to go to battle over who should run the universe. A great battle ensued, a cosmic conflict. There was war in heaven, and Lucifer, now called Satan, was cast out of heaven with all his followers. Why didn't God just nip evil in the bud, destroy it before it had a chance to spread and cause so much suffering? If God had executed Lucifer, just zapped him in an instant, all the other angels would reason. Poor Lucifer. He tried to tell us, God is a tyrant, and look what's happened to him. It seems Lucifer was right. It seems that his charges are true. God chose a wiser course. He'd allow sin to exist for a period of time, and when it had been fully demonstrated that God's way brings joy and Lucifer's way brings death, then and only then would God destroy all evil. Love doesn't force. Love lets people see for themselves, decide for themselves. God wants us to love him back for who he is. No one back then, except God, knew what a disaster Lucifer's alternative would be. No one knew how much suffering and misery it would create. We had to see that for ourselves. That's the only way God could ensure that evil would never plague the universe again. Planet Earth joins the conflict. In the Garden of Eden, when Eve told the serpent, God had said she would die if she ate of a certain tree. Satan contradicted God and said, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. See Genesis chapter 3, 4 and 5. Satan was saying, You'll have greater happiness if you follow me. God is restricting your freedom. Tragically, Eve and her husband Adam accepted that lie. Today we live on a planet in rebellion, a planet full of decay and death. The Origin of Suffering In Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 43, Jesus talked about a man who planted good seed in his field, but useless weeds popped up everywhere, leading a servant to ask, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? That's the question we all face at some time in life. If God made this world to blossom for his children, why do we see so many tragic weeds? In Jesus' parable, the master answered the question very simply. He said, An enemy did this. It was an enemy of God and man who sowed his seeds of suffering and sin. God had a plan. God didn't abandon the human race because it rebelled against him. From the very beginning, he had a plan. If you wonder, 
Why doesn't God do something about the sickness and sin and heartache in our world? The answer is, He has done something. He's given everything in the gift of His Son. He came into the world and suffered with us, and we can someday triumph with Him. There is now going on in the universe a cosmic conflict between good and evil. Fortunately, your Bible reveals both the origin and the conclusion of that conflict. If you will look at the next few verses, if you want to write them down, if you look at 1 John chapter 4, verses 8 and 16, God's very essence of love, infinite love, undying love. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30, suffering, sickness, and death came from an enemy of God and man. If you look at Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12, God created the angel Lucifer, absolutely flawless, beautiful, and perfect. Ezekiel 28, verse 15, But Lucifer used his God-given freedom of choice and became evil. Ezekiel 28, verse 17, Lucifer became puffed up with pride and corrupted himself. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 14, Prideful Lucifer had eye trouble. He wanted to be God. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. The Bible reveals that there was war in heaven. Revelation 12, verse 9. Satan and his angels were cast out of heaven to this earth. In Luke chapter 10, verse 18, Jesus himself said he beheld Satan fall like lightning from heaven. In John 8, verse 44, Satan is the father of all lies and lying. Ezekiel 28 verse 13 The devil was in Eden the garden of God to attempt our first parents Genesis 3 verse 1 to 6 Satan led Adam and Eve to mistrust God and openly defy his command Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2 Sin separates us from God Jeremiah 17 verse 9 The nature of the human race changed as a result of mankind's disobedience, our nature became sinful. Sin infected the human heart. Romans 3, verse 10 and 23. The entire human race plunged into guilt, disobedience, and sin. Romans 6, verse 23. In chapter 5, verse 12. The ultimate result of disobedience is death. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, and chapter 4, verse 15, Jesus took man's nature, faced man's temptations, and was victorious. Romans chapter 5, verse 17 to 19, Jesus redeemed Adam's failure. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, through faith in Jesus, salvation is ours as a gift. See also Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 18 God will finally destroy Satan and bring him to ashes so that the devil will be no more forever. Revelation 21 verse 1 to 5 Our God will establish a new heaven and a new earth. Nahum chapter 1 verse 9 Sin will never rear its ugly head a second time.